What's up guys, James here from Seekhost and today we're going to be going through a run through of your multicraft, the dashboard and how you're able to use it. Let's get started first with actually understanding your dashboard. Once you have logged in, once you have created your server with Seekhost, you're going to get an email with a link to your multicraft with a separate password and username to log in here. Once you have logged in, you'll be able to see your server from the list up here. If you've got multiple servers, you can go ahead and choose them from here. This dashboard is primarily used to control everything on your server, from starting to stopping or restarting your server, checking the chat, the console, files, the advanced features that we have, changing the domain, the world name, and everything else which we're going to go through shortly. So let's get started first with your server, how you're able to start it, stop it, restart it. Up on here you can see that my server is started so I currently have a tick and the start button is slightly unhighlighted. If I wanted to stop my server I can simply come over and click this and you will stop your server. We very much recommend stopping your server previous to making any changes, uploads or deleting anything from your server and then starting it back up afterwards so it doesn't corrupt any files. As well as that you also have a restart button in case you need to restart. We also recommend to restart every now and again just to make sure that it's cleared any cache on your server. The kill button we do not recommend to use, um, it will make an immediate kill on your server however it can damage files so realistically stop the server, be patient if it doesn't stop for any reason, make sure to contact us and we'll be able to help you rather than pressing the kill button. Now that you're started your server you're going to be started on a default minecraft java server with the latest version however if you do want to change this this is going to be made quite easy first of all what we're going to need to do is just go ahead and stop the server before we actually make any major changes on the server or any small ones either now with the server stopping what we want to do is we actually want to delete the old files from the default minecraft server because we don't want them anymore we're going to be changing to a different jar this could be a bedrock server a crossplay java and we have many different versions ranging from modded to java and even pocket mine for mobile version servers. Once your server has completely stopped what we're going to want to do is come over to files and then we're going to go to setup. From here to delete any old server files we can simply select clean mod directories and plugins and then select delete all server files. At this point it will ask you for your multicraft password just to make sure. Once you filled that in just hit apply. This won't happen instantly this will happen when you start the server back up again. So what we want to do now is we want to come back to the server main dashboard here. We're going to want to choose what we want to pick. If you want to choose bedrock come to the top of the list and bedrock will always be on the most up-to-date version. Crossplay will give you crossplay between Java and Bedrock and it will give you a template with guys and Floodgate already installed. And if you do pick this just make sure to come down and read our tutorial because there's just two changes you need to make and then you're fully up and running. Click here for the tutorial. So let's say for instance I want to start a server on paper 1.18.2 so I'm going to select that server jar here. I'm going to click save and then we're going to start the server back up. What this will now do with the setup is that it will delete any old files on your server it will empty it and get it ready to upload all the new files for paper 1.18.2 so you can start playing on your server. Whilst that's happening, let's just come over and look at the console option and this will basically tell you all the information of what's happening on your server or your console right now. You can also operate commands through here. You can run any in-game command without the forward slash and this is also how you can go ahead and OP yourself. If you are on the server and this is going to be your name, I can then OP jdog131131, press send and of course if they are on the server we are going to OP them. If he's not on the server that's going to say that the player does not exist. Now again if you do want to change, let's say for instance you want to change back to bedrock, you can follow the exact same steps by running a setup, deleting the old files, changing your server jar to what you want it, so let's say bedrock for instance, pressing save and then starting your server back up. So next up let's look at two things, this is going to be your server settings and also how to get to the files and folders on your server. For server settings we are going to come up to files and we're going to go down to config files. Then we're going to go to server settings. Another thing to add that if you do have separate plugins that you can come and you can access their config.yml from this page also in case you need to make any tweaks to the plugins. From here you can easily change all of the options on your server from message of the day, your spawn protection size, view distance, timeout time and anything else that you might want to change. Once you've made your changes and you're happy just make sure to save and then either restart or start your server back up. Now let's go ahead and access some of the server files. Again we're going to come over to files on the left hand side and this time we're going to go to FTP file access. Once you've logged in using your multicraft password you're going to be brought to all of the files and folders on your server. Any ones with icons like these are folders which will then open up to more files and all files will be labeled like this with a little edit mark on the right hand side so you can actually edit it from here. Let's say for instance you wanted to change some of the server properties like we've just done now but you want to do it manually through the files, you can come to server properties and click edit on the right hand side. You can go through all of the properties and settings and also change them this way. Now this will differ depending on what server jar that you have, you might have a paper, you might have bedrock and they all come slightly differently. This is why we do recommend to delete all the old ones before you upload any new server jars. 
This has everything from your version history, Spigot YML, your worlds, whether it be Nether or the end, and also access to your plugins. We're going to go through this shortly just to show you how you can upload and delete plugins also. One thing to note about FTP file access that it is limited to the size, but we do have another option of using FileZilla. Now when you do click on FTP file access, you're going to see a little video on the bottom right hand side showing you exactly how to move your files using FileZilla, which will allow you to upload, delete, or do anything on your server and it doesn't depend how big the size of the files are. So now that we've got most of the server set up, you know your settings and how to access the files, let's go ahead to how you can actually back up your server. And we do recommend backing up your server quite frequently. Before you make a backup, just make sure that you actually stop your server first to make sure that it's completely stopped because it's gonna be hard to make a backup when everything's still running and potentially players might still be on there. Once completely stopped, we're gonna come over to files and we're gonna to go to backup. From here, we can simply go up, press start, and it will make us a very nice backup copy that we can then use again to restore. If you do ever need to restore a backup, simply come up to the top left and click restore. Then we can start up our server again. Now let's get down to the worlds option and how this works. So the current world that you have loaded and that you can also check in your FTP file access, it will be world, world the nether, or world the end, will be what you have written down here. This is your loader and also creator of worlds. So for instance, if I was to stop my server and then change my world name to spawn, it will actually create a brand new world called spawn. So let's just go ahead and save this and let's start the server back up with a new world called spawn. Now what it won't do is it won't delete any of your old worlds, they will simply be kept on your server files. We do recommend not keeping too many because of course the more that you keep, the slower your server will get because it will be less memory. However, do feel free to keep your worlds on there. If you do start to have an impact on your server, just make sure to delete the ones that you are not needing. Of course, if you're using Java, make sure to use Multiverse because you can make sure that you can unload some of the worlds so they're not all running at the same time. So now with that sorted, let's go over to files and then let's go to FTP file access. And as you can see, we have now started a new world called Spawn. We also have Spawn Nether and Spawn the End. But of course, we still have all of our old versions as well, which is Worlds, Worlds the End, and Worlds Nether. Now, what do I do if I want to swap back to my old original world? Again, let's just make sure to stop the server first. Now, with the server successfully stopped, let's just go ahead and see how we can swap between worlds. So let's say, for instance, I now don't want to use my Spawn world. I want to load up the original world that I had. Make sure that you name it exactly what the actual world was. So mine was called Worlds because that's why I started it. Make sure to save. Once saved, start up your server, and it will now run the world that you have in the world folder, which is called worlds, or whatever other name that you have given it. Next up, let's go to domains. Domain is going to be another way to connect. The first way to connect, of course, is by using the IP, followed by colon, and then the port. So all of this together will be your address to join if you're Java. If you're on Bedrock, simply use the IP separately, then your port underneath. However, what we can do is we can also make ourselves a custom domain name so people can join easily. So I'm just going to put JDog Game here, and it's going to be JDog game.seekerhostservice.com. Once I do press save, we now have our custom domain. As long as it's free, it will then allow us, and we can use that. So people can now log on to your server. Rather than using the IP and port, they can use your custom domain, which is jdoggame.seekerhostservice.com, whatever you've named it. If you are on Bedrock, you're going to have to use that instead of the IP, but you will still need to put the port down underneath in the separate section. Now, with all of that done, let's move on to plugins and how you can use plugins. Now, again, I'm just going to stop my server because before you upload, delete, or do anything, editing with plugins, I do suggest stopping your server first. Now we have two ways of adding plugins. You can either come over to files and you can look through the local plugin list. From here, just select the source. So if you're using a Spigot server, make sure you select Spigot. If you are running paper, you can use both Bucket and Spigot. If you're using Pocket Mine, you can use Pocket Mine or Pocket or Nugget. You can use this to search for the name of the plugin and then once you do find it, just make sure that you click on it, make sure that it works for your correct version and you can also check the information on the actual Spigot page here. Once you're happy, go ahead and install. And then in the same way, if you need to remove it, you can then click remove to remove it off your files. Another way to do it is by coming to files and then FTP file access. Once logged in, go ahead to your plugins folder and from here, we can simply go ahead and upload. Choose the file that you need to upload, then once you have chosen it, press submit and it will upload it to your server. And much in the same way, if you do want to delete them using the FTP file access, simply come onto plugins, check the one that you want to delete, and then go ahead to delete. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the mod packs that you can start up. Now, before you do run a mod pack, um, and if you have got any other server settings or any other server already installed, again, what we're going to do is we're going to go to files and we're going to go to setup just to make sure that we delete all the other server files. Again, we're going to choose the drop down menu and we're going to go to clean mod directories and plugins, and then we're going to go to delete all server files and then input our multicraft password. Again, this will not happen immediately. So what we can now do is we can go back to the actual server itself and we can go ahead and select our mod pack. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to choose RLcraft. Once you've chosen your mod pack, just make sure to go ahead and save the mod pack and then we're going to go ahead and start up our server. 
Now what will happen with the setup, it will delete all the other server files, the previous ones, making sure that we have an empty server. And we're uploading the mod pack that we've chosen there, so everything will now get uploaded for you. And that's all you need to do to play any of our mod packs. Now, if you don't find one of the mod packs that you do want to play on here, feel free to send us a ticket for your client area and we will be happy to install it for you. Just make sure that you let us know the correct version of the mod pack that you need and we'll be able to get the exact version installed for you. You can again check the console if you want to check how everything's going, how the template and uh, if you're throwing up any errors on the server whatsoever. Whilst that's loading up, let's go to the advanced option and just check out some of the features that we have here. First of all, you're going to find commands. Commands are going to be the commands that you do have, however you do have more options such as create a command or create default commands. Here you can make default commands on a Java server, which you can then run through your chat. As we can see here, teleport me is a custom made one. You can add in a name, a required role, a prerequisite, what you've got to type into chat, a response message, and then the actual command that you're going to run. Next up, we have scheduled tasks. Here you can schedule tasks to run whenever. As you can see here, I actually have um, a series that will stop the server, back up the server, start the server, or restart it. You can choose many different things here. If we go to new tasks, and you can run any of these commands, whether it be give an item, admin say, create a backup, stop if empty, so you can stop your server if it's empty, or a really good one, which is restart if empty. So you can set this to, let's say, every 12 or 6 hours. If it's empty, it will then restart to help clear some of the cache. Last but not least, we do have the players list. These are all the players that are going to have been logged on. I won't have the full screen shown, so of course it does also show the IP. But you can scroll through here, and then you can select some of them, and choose whether to ban them, give them a different role, assign to user their status when they were last seen, IP address, and previous IPs address as well. As we can see, our mod pack is completely loaded up. If we go to the console, you will see that everything has been loaded. And if you do want to play with your mod pack, just make sure that you've got it installed on your client side first, or you're using something like the CurseForge launcher, and then log onto the world using the same mod pack so they match. So that's pretty much anything that you're going to need to know with your Moldcraft. If you do have any other questions, make sure to hit us up on the live chat on seekerhost.co, or send us a support ticket, and we will be really glad to help you.